All right, I just reinstalled that rear wood lever. Uh, that's the lever that's held in by two screws that are, look like eight millimeter. Anyways, from this angle here, you can barely see it. You can stick your fingers in there and maybe feel around. But if you get something to stand on, give you a little extra height so you can lean over far enough. If you look down right behind the master cylinder, there's just enough room so you can actually see that lever and see what you're doing. That's good. At this time, I'm going to reattach the two return springs. It's going to be easy to put those on when that rod's not in the way. So one of my springs is a genuine spring. You can see it's got these weird plastic clips on it that snap over the uh, snap over the uh, slots in the rod, the grooves in the rod. And then this is just an off-the-shelf uh, generic spring that actually equals almost the perfect length of this. So rather than buy the very overly ridiculously priced spring, I bought these. When you've got these ends of these springs in correctly, these plastic things, you should feel them clip in. If they're not clipped in, you're going to worry about them popping off. I'm putting the uh, OEM spring on the inside where it's harder to get to because that's the one that I really don't want falling off. My uh, aftermarket spring I'll put on the outside here because this is pretty easy to get to. If it were to fall off, it would be pretty easy for me to replace it. The springs came in a two-pack. I'll keep an extra one in the truck in case that were to ever happen. Next up, this bracket assembly with the bell crank on it and the uh, rod. These 10 millimeter bolts, it's a lot easier to just put in the two top ones and that'll line up the hole close enough so you can get the bottom one in. There's a hole in the bracket that's below the hole that you put the bottom bolt in. So if you're feeling around, you gotta feel for that one hole and stick it in the hole above it. That's generally the case. In the words of Jeff Bradshaw, click. That was his built-in torque wrench. I miss Jeff's videos. I doubt he's watching this. But if he were to watch this video, I would say, Jeff, where are you? Anybody watching this video doesn't know who I'm talking about, check out this old truck. Jeff Bradshaw is a gentleman out in Oregon. Loves old trucks, loves working on them. Has some very entertaining videos. Oh. Now I'm going to snap the rear ball joint back onto its ball. <laughs> there. All right, now I gotta go get that critical measurement we have to make. We have to adjust that rod uh, to a very specific distance. All right, so the measurement you need to make to see whether or not you need to adjust that rod length is a measurement from the center line of this ball right here, which is where the throttle cable actually attaches, okay? Uh, I believe it's the throttle cable. Anyways, well, it's this ball on top here. All right, the distance from the center line of this ball to the rear of this plate. So right here is the hole that uh, one of the uh, one of the additional cables that has to be hooked up, either the uh, cruise control or the uh, transmission linkage cable. I forget which goes in this hole right here. This plate that the hole is in, it's the rear of this plate. So you take the thickness of the plate into account. So if you're measuring from the front, you have to add the thickness of the plate. Okay. But I have this short little uh, scale right here. It's a little six inch scale. It actually fits in that hole. So I can actually put it right at the back of the plate. 
and I could see where I am that uh, right now I'm at about four and five eighths. So I need to adjust that. All right, so for those of you who couldn't see what I was talking about, right here there's a ball on the top of this, uh, I believe they call this the secondary bell crank lever. Okay, and the reason why this is secondary is because this is the one that moves independently and is tied to the primary bell crank lever by the torsion spring. So the primary bell crank lever is the one that the, the lever down there attaches to. This is the secondary bell crank lever. There's a ball right here. So we're going to measure from the center line of this ball over to this plate, this mounting plate, but we want the rear, this side of the plate. And this big hole right here for that cable to go through, that grommet to go through. So I can actually stick this right in here. And when my finger, when my other hand is free, I can use my other hand to make sure that I uh, actually am lined up with the uh, end of that, uh, back of that plate. All right, and I can see that I'm at about four and five eighths right now. So I need to move this ball towards the front of the truck, towards the radiator. And to move the top that way, I need to move the bottom rearward. So I've got to shorten, I've got to shorten this rod, this rod that we put back in. And I got to do that by turning those uh, there, right there. I got to turn that. Okay, I've got the, uh, linkage to the transmission hook back up and this cable right here goes over to the uh, cruise control and that appears to clip onto the back of this bracket here. I'm gonna have to double check. My concern right now is this is the throttle pedal cable which should clip onto this ball right here and it's not staying on so I don't know whether or not I have to go back and check my video on disassembly. I don't know if there was a clip on here that holds this holds this on that I took off. I hope that's all it is. Otherwise, something has broken inside this, so it's not staying on there. But for the time being, I'm going to leave the throttle position sensor off and. I'm just going to throw the intake on, but I'm not going to hook up the plumbing to the turbo. It should be able to still start without the turbo pushing air in there. It should be able to run naturally aspirated, I would think. Hopefully we get enough battery power. Now, since the throttle cable, uh, the accelerator pedal cable is disconnected, this would be just like I'm trying to start it with no pedal, which is what I'm hoping it's going to do. And wait for the uh, wait the start light to go out. Well, I'm telling you right now that that uh that's cranking kind of slow. That might not do it. And it could be that I still have the other problem, which is it still needs pedal to start. So I'm gonna go call an assistant. Go ahead. When the light goes out, crank it. Stop. All right, stop. Yeah. All right, do it again. Turn the key on and when the light goes out, crank it. All right, all right, all right. The batteries are too low. Got to get it spinning faster than that. That's Friday, November 23rd. Black Friday, the day after Thanksgiving. It's uh, chilly out here. It's about 28 degrees. Yesterday, the high was only about 17 degrees, and that was Thanksgiving, so I definitely wasn't going to get out here yesterday. It's been a few days. Um, last time I was working on this, it started to get kind of late. The batteries were drained down. There was no way it was going to spin fast enough 
and it was getting cold. Uh, I've got the block heater plugged in. It's been plugged in for a couple hours now. I've got the battery charger on here, so uh, we should have enough power now to, uh, to get this thing to start. Now I'm going to be curious to see whether or not this thing will start without having to give it any pedal to see if that problem was solved by the uh, adjustment of that linkage. But because it's so cold, for the first start attempt, I think we're going to give it a little bit of pedal. I did attach the uh, throttle cable. We're going to have to do something about that because that's not going to be uh, very... Uh, reliable I'll get to that in a bit well, let's go for a start see what happens <laughs> to see where the idle ends up once it's warmed up. Yeah, it's coming up now. Still looks like it's going to be kind of low though. That right there is probably around, I don't know, 800 or 850 RPM. Well, check back in a couple of minutes. All right, it's been running about five minutes now. The uh, temperature gauge still has not budged, which I guess I shouldn't be surprised. Uh, <laughs> It's very cold out here. I can still see my own breath. Of course, I didn't have the heat on in the cab either. Um, but the uh, RPMs have leveled out, looking like it's right around 900 RPM. So that's looking pretty good. The, uh, let me give the throttle a couple of quick gooses. It's coming right back, no more sticking, so that problem is solved. Let's uh, let's give it some more throttle here. Running a little rough at those higher RPMs. You can tell it's still cold. As is evident by the huge cloud of smoke coming out of the beast. So. Let's see, if I shut it off, whether or not we can get it to restart without giving it any pedal. Alright, so let's try this. Wait to start is on. Hey! Not bad. Um, you know, cranked longer than longer than I would like, but it did start without me touching the pedal, which it has not been able to do uh, since I've owned it. It would just sit there and crank and crank and crank, and I venture to guess that in warmer weather, this may very well uh, have started right up. I don't know. Oh, the GoPro's acting up on me again. Keep getting an SD card error. Anyways, I tweaked that adjustment, the five inch adjustment, just a tiny bit, maybe like an eighth of an inch. I think I've got it improved. This is no pedal. better than what I had and considering how cold it is outside today I think that's going to be okay I can always revisit this in warmer weather so I think that's going to resolve that issue I'm going to lock down those lock nuts on that rod and again just to clarify what I'm doing here uh, the thickness of this bracket right here is almost exactly an eighth of an inch so when I remove the throttle cable off of the uh, ball there and then I bring this scale in and I stick it right up against the front of that plate okay and I look at where the center of the ball ends up so I can get in here ah come on 
All right, so I don't know if you can quite see that, but the center line of the ball right there appears to be uh, right between the, well, let's see. I'd say that's the, that's the 15th, 16th mark or so. Okay, so actually even there, it's still not quite exactly right. It's kind of hard to get that measurement. So what I want to do is I want to add an eighth of an inch to that to make up for the thickness of the bracket because it's supposed to be a measurement from the rear of the bracket to the, uh, to the center line of that ball. All right, so right there is, yeah, I'd say that's about right. That's about five inches right there. And like I said, it's, it's starting now with no pedal after maybe only a few seconds of, of cranking. And uh, so I'm happy with that. So, okay, I just locked down those locking nuts. I'm gonna give it one more test. Oh, oh, hey! Tachometer's working again, sort of. That's a needle in a haystack kind of problem. I'm not gonna look forward to trying ta to track down <laughs> the electrical problem that's causing my tack to be intermittent. Not to mention it could be the tack itself. Oh, well, I got a feeling it's more likely a bad ground or so something like that. I've tried um, having people watch in the cab while I move around wiring harnesses and wiggle things and uh, haven't had any luck. And you can see it's very intermittent. Sometimes it'll just go for weeks and months without any problems at all. So now um, I need to install my TPS or throttle position sensor. Now the proper way to make sure that your throttle position sensor is aligned is to actually use a uh, diagnostic tool plugged into the uh, plug under the dashboard there and go through a, a whole rigmarole of, uh, of uh, procedure there to figure out whether or not it, it basically you scroll down through a menu and you find out what voltage is present at the TPS in various um, positions of the throttle, full throttle or or idle. And uh, I don't have one of those, so I'm not going to be able to do that. So I'm just going to follow one of the uh, instructions I found online on how to put this on. Apparently, the TPS is spring-loaded inside there. And so what you have to do is, there's obviously there's a tang on here that's going to go into those holes. And the idea is that you're supposed to position this on the, on the back of there. And then apparently rotate this clockwise. And I'm assuming the same, we'll have to make the assumption from the back side, looking at it from the back. Rotate it clocks, clockwise until the holes line up so you can put these screws back in. So that, that ought to be interesting. Well, so much for that theory. Um, there was no way I was going to be able to put it on slanted and then rotate it clockwise to get it to engage because it was engaging perfectly fine exactly the way the holes line up. So I'm not sure if that's in there right or not. So there is one test we can do. Supposedly, you have somebody get in the cab and uh, put the pedal down to wide open throttle and you want to make sure that this uh, secondary bracket here the secondary bell crank can't can't be moved any further i think that's the uh that's the way you check and see if that's on there correctly the only way i'm going to know for sure is if i get it out on like the highway and see how it shifts because basically the throttle position sensor on this engine the uh, main job that it does my understanding is is to let the transmission know when uh when it's uh optimal time to shift or something like that it has something to do with shifting so first i'm just going to make sure the pedal still feels okay yeah it feels normal uh, let's see how it starts. All right. Okay, I got my intake hooked all back up. I got everything all tightened up and ready to go. There's uh, one other thing I've got to deal with on this thing, and I'm probably going to wait until warmer weather. But this, this little uh, 
end of the throttle cable here pops off of this ball way too easily way too easily so unfortunately that's going to be a potential problem oddly enough as easy as that comes off i can actually actuate the throttle several times without it coming off the problem is i don't want that coming off right when you're you know going down the road which has happened to several people now unfortunately that piece on the end there is not available as a separate part it only comes as a throttle cable assembly it was also a kit that Mopar made back in the day, which is like almost perpetually never in stock any longer. And the kit actually contained a throttle cable and new balls, uh, the ball studs. So, that, and that was dirt cheap when, when it was available and that was in stock at the Mopar dealers. Probably because it was part of a recall. Uh, it was another recall on these for sticking throttle cables. Uh, needless to say that that it was like 17 or 15 dollars for the whole kit that's no longer the case so now if you want to buy just the throttle cable alone i think it's around 70 bucks but my throttle cable is not frayed damaged or binding in any way so i don't know i don't want to replace the whole throttle cable just because of this so i will come heck or high water figure out a way to get that to stay on there better but I'll probably wait for that to be, uh, that'll be a warmer weather project. For the time being, I think it's gonna be okay. So let's give it one more test start. It has cooled off a bit. So let's see if it'll still start without pedal. Come on. I'm gonna have to give it some pedal. I barely touch the pedal. I mean, barely touch it and it comes right to life. That's still an improvement over what it was. So now, uh, let me uh, let me disconnect my block heater, close the hood, make sure I don't have any tools somewhere where they'll fall down, and we'll test drive. Test drive this thing. That's a wrap. You can see it's idling now just under a grand. So I bet you it'll restart now easier. Yeah, a 
about the same. But at least I don't have to touch the pedal. I don't have to give it, you know, crack the throttle to get it to start. I'm going to call this a uh, successful repair for the time being until I get that that little uh, loose um, throttle cable issue sorted out. All right. Take care. Thanks for watching.